Hey everyone, welcome to another video. A couple of months back, a gentle person had asked me a question on my how to set up DNS over TLS video, whether your ISP can monitor your SNI information while you are connected to a VPN. Now, assuming if they had asked me about SNI, not NSI, which most likely was the typo, because in that video, there was a section where I had demonstrated that currently it doesn't matter that much whether you are using DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS or DNS script, your ISP can and very likely does keep an eye on your internet connection by monitoring your SNI information. It's, it's, uh, it's it's host name just say that it's host name pretty much travels over the internet in plain text your so your isp can still still see these uh, these these sni they can still capture the the sni request okay if you don't know what SNI is, SNI stands for server name indication. But before I should give you any further information on this subject, I should give you a very basic intro to the TLS protocol. When you open a website inside your preferred browser, you may or may not have noticed this small padlock sign in the front or in the back of the address bar. This tiny padlock, which has become increasingly prevalent these days, indicates that your connection to the website you are currently connected to is secure. So nobody can tell what videos you are watching. <coughs> Sorry everyone, uh, what videos you are watching on YouTube or can steal your credit card information while it is in transit to the payment gateway or can make any sort of alteration to data before it reaches your computer. Basically, the technology behind the padlock sign that makes the internet a much more secure and safe place to visit is called TLS or Transport Layer Security Protocol and SNI or Server Name Indication is a part of this protocol. To explain what SNI is in easy terms, let's say we have Neil and his parents are really old, they don't have any phone and they are living in a caring facility for elderly people. Now, if Neil wants to talk to his parents at the moment, how can he reach them? Hmm? Of course, he would need to call on the phone number provided by the nursing home and give the assistant on the other side with his parents' names. Because there may be plenty of elderly people living in that facility and Neil has to provide the assistant with some sort of defining information so they can go and fetch Neil's parents on the line. And just like that interaction between Neil and the assistant is how SNI or server name indication works. Here we would replace Neil with the browser and the assistant with the server. Let's say we open our browser and type in mybank.example.com and press enter. Before our browser and the web server can share any sort of user data with each other, they first need to establish a secure tunnel between themselves. And to do that, our browser sends what we call a client hello message to the web server and say something like, of course, this is not in a literal sense. Hey web server, I would like to establish a secure connection between ourselves. Can you please pass me your identity certificate so we can proceed ahead? Now. In an ideal world where every website is stored on a separate server, setting up a secure tunnel between the server and the client would not be a big problem. Our browser would fetch the website's IP address from the DNS provider. You can check out my how DNS works video for that. And since the web server would only be hosting a single website, it would know that it has to provide the identity certificate of mybank.example.com whenever any browser would make a request for a secure connection. But we, my dear people, we don't live in an idle world. In the real world, there very often are hosted not one or two, but dozens of websites on a single web server. Without knowing, how can the server tell if the browser is requesting the identity certificate for mybank.example.com or if it is requesting the identity certificate of an another bank.example.org or of some other websites that it is hosting at the moment? If the server tried to make a guess and send the wrong certificate, your browser is going to treat that certificate as deceptive and present you with errors like your connection is not private or the hostname in the website security certificate differs from the website you are trying to visit. To stop these errors from ever happening on the legitimate requests, our unsung internet heroes have developed, developed a quite an ingenious solution to this problem.
Whenever our browser sends the initial client hello message to the server, in that message it also embeds the hostname of the website it needs the identity certificate of in a plain text. And that is it. Yeah, this is it. This sending of the hostname in a plain text is what we call server name indication. So in the initial example where our browser had asked for the identity certificate in the ambiguity with SNI extension, the browser would ask for the same certificate with something like, hey web server, I would like to establish a secure connection between ourselves. Can you please pass me the identity certificate of mybank.example.com so we can proceed ahead. And voila, the server now knows which website's identity certificate the browser is asking for. It hands that certificate to the browser. After verifying the certificate's identity and validity, and also after some extra steps, the browser and the server can finally establish a secure tunnel between themselves. And the user data, your data like your login information, your cookies, your images, whatever it is, it can finally flow freely and securely through this tunnel. Keeping up with the tradition of, of, of the computing, if by developing SNI we have solved one of the internet's problem, now the solution to this problem has created a yet another problem. And the new problem is, before any sort of encryption can take place, the hostname of the website has to travel over the internet in plain text. Which doesn't sound that much, but my dear people, those few unencrypted words empowers our ISPs to figure if their users are more interested, let's say, in the social media or are they more interested in streaming content over the internet. If they are more or less interested in both, why not serve the users with the ad of their own streaming platform on social media websites? I have taken a uh, very light-hearted example. It's just that I don't want to indulge in some sort of fear-mongering, but the ramifications of this can, yeah, they can run quite, they can run quite far alarming than this, okay? And then with the help of SNI, your ISP can also apply any sort of content filtration on your connection. Again, for many, it can be absolutely no, no thing that one should have the authority to dictate what you can or cannot watch on the internet. But for the others, it can be a must uh, tool to have. And for the third, it can be a topic of deep discussion. Although I cannot promise it, I have a video planned on the subject of privacy, okay? But for now, I, it's just that I don't want to steer away too off from the video's main topic. And that is, can your ISP monitor your SNI information while you are connected to a VPN? And the answer to this question is... No, they cannot. To demonstrate this, here I have opened a packet capture in the pfSense and this pfSense is currently connected to a VPN. Okay, the reason we are using pfSense's packet capture instead of Wireshark is because the Wireshark is on the local area network side and the pfSense would be capturing the packets which would be leaving our local area network to the public internet okay it's on the one side i hope you got the idea what i'm trying to say here in the next few tabs i have typed some urls which i would be using to test if our isp would be able to discern uh would be able to gather any discernible information while we are connected to a vpn because remember it in the pf sense is on is, is capturing the data which is leaving our leaving our our local area network to the public internet which is which has obviously has to go through our my our uh, through my isp okay uh i if you want i just can remove https it really doesn't matter but why not for yeah and yeah let's press enter enter or start and press enter here okay <laughs> Uh, yeah. I believe this is enough. Uh, let's download our capture and open our capture in the Wireshark. 
and as you can see there are only open vpn packets okay so as you know you may or may not know the open vpn packets are encrypted so our isp wasn't wasn't uh uh, yeah our isp ca can't see uh, can't 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 what <laughs> okay sorry can't gather any discernible information from our connection okay i guess this oh, i hope this answers your question no your isp cannot cannot monitor your sni information while you are connected to a vpn okay I hope you have liked what I have made and I have hopes to see you in the next video. Um, yeah, bye everyone. Yeah, before but before I leave, I should tell you that in the next video, I would be making a comparison between running a VPN on your router or and, and versus running a VPN on your OS operating system. Okay, yeah. Bye everyone. I hope I have hopes to see you in the next video.